John with the Healthy MD back today to talk about a little bit more about autophagy. Um, what I wanted to talk about today was the role of exercise in inducing autophagy and how that can play a major role as far as helping keeping you healthy or move you back onto the path of, um, of getting healthier. So let's kind of dive in and talk a little bit more about it. Now, if you're not familiar with the term autophagy, what it stands for is a two Greek words that stand for auto, which is self, and phagy, which is eating, so self-eating. And autophagy is essentially the recycling mechanism of all of our cells. And if you think about the way our cells actually work, they're always making proteins, different types of um, organelles and other substances in, in within the cell that are supposed to work. And over time, they start to degrade a little bit. They don't function as well. They you know, start to proteins fold and unfold to do certain um, things within the cell. And over time, they may not function properly. So instead of just kind of letting them pile up, uh, just like if you never took the trash out of the kitchen, be tough to move around. So the body has autophagy as a way to actually break down the cellular debris and recycle it back into its uh, its own components. It's pretty fascinating stuff and actually led to a Nobel Prize in medicine back, I think, in 2016 uh, for some of the groundbreaking research on it. So otherwise, our cells are just fill up and, and kind of <clears throat> not function. And that may actually be one of the things that we're seeing with people as we age or people that have problems where we're talking about heart disease, um, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, certain type of cancers may also benefit from kind of an increase in, in our autophagic uh, system. Now, most people probably think that, or if you've read quite a bit, or if you're doing your uh, searches on the internet, you may think, hey, doesn't uh, isn't fasting the only way I can get into autophagy? I mean, that's what read all over the place. And if I can't fast, then I won't ever get uh, into autophagy and my cells are going to explode for all this debris. I'm here to tell you that's not really the case. Exercise actually is probably more autophagic than fasting. And I want you to kind of think about that for a, mi a minute. And if you're sitting on the couch, you know, some of you are kind of groaning saying, oh my gosh, are you saying I have to go dog? have to go exercise docs? Yeah. You know, ask your doc if getting off your ass and exercising is right for you. And I'm going to tell you, yeah, it is. And here's some of the proof behind it. So if we look at what exercise actually does, stimulates autophagy within cells, primarily in muscle cells, but also heart cells, some of the other cells throughout our body. And if you think about that process, it kind of makes sense because when we exercise, we're putting a, a stress on the body. We're doing aerobic exercise, lifting weights, resistance exercise, high intensity exercise. All that exercise is breaking down cells and those cells have to recycle um, in order to build up, uh, build back up from it. Now, we also know that looking at certain cells, so if you look at neurons in the brain, that in promoting autophagy in those neurons actually helps those neurons function better. So think about, it's almost like if your hard drive on your computer um, fills up, the computer is not going to work well. Or if there's too much memory being used by your computer, um, computer is not going to function well. So you can kind of clean out that memory, uh, clean out that hard drive, open up some space, then the computer works better. And it's kind of the same way to think about autophagy is that, it's, again, it's kind of breaking down kind of cellular debris that's getting in the way of the cell properly functioning definitely helps with mitochondrial function, which we've talked about before, and just kind of the whole cellular process of letting those cells function and probably actually decreasing cellular aging, I guess is maybe one way to think about it. So now if we move on to exercise, really the question becomes what type of exercise is the best or most beneficial for inducing autophagy? And so it's going to be one of three. So either your aerobic exercise, which is your running, swimming, biking, kind of that long cardio or some type of cardio exercise. can even be walking, uh, jogging does not have to be, we call more the moderate exercise where you can still kind of talk as you're doing it. That kind of moderate exer aerobic exercise has been shown um, in several studies to, to be very beneficial as far as inducing autophagy in muscle cells and heart cells. Other exercises or types of exercises that also help with that uh, high intensity uh, training. So the HIT uh, style of training, which is kind of the 10, 15 seconds on, 45 seconds off, kind of Tabata intervals, uh, CrossFit, things like that, where you're kind of 
So high intensity exercise is also very helpful for inducing autophagy. Now high intensity exercise is more your interval training. Uh, if you're looking at like CrossFit, uh, Orange Theory, things, uh, activities like that. Uh, even like tennis, things where you're sprinting, recovery, sprint, recovery, uh, and even resistance exercise. If you look at weightlifting, um, that can also in some ways be um, kind of a high intensity uh, exercise because you're lifting hard, uh, short bursts of, uh, of exercise and with a recovery in between. That's also very uh, autophagic for the body, especially for the muscles and the heart cells. So you want to find a mix of those. Now, what you don't want to do is overdo it. So just like, say, everything in moderation, including moderation, too much exercise can actually inhibit autophagy. And this is where people get into overtraining. Uh, you look at people that are kind of chronic exercises and the exercisers, and they may not look that healthy, uh, even though they're always working out. That may be the thing they've actually blunted their body's ability to clean out their cellular debris and are building up, building up, and they never truly recover from that extra continuing bouts of exercise that they're putting on there. So again, kind of find that sweet spot uh, in between <clears throat> where, where we're exercising. And then obviously, if you're new to exercise, you want to go talk to your doctor first. Make sure, hey, is everything okay before you start off there? So that's kind of a typical disclaimer I always throw in is that you want to make sure, you know, if you're starting, you just don't want to start off and and jump off the couch and go join crossfit again get into a, a a walking program jogging program kind of build up from there get into the gym work with a personal trainer kind of someone to kind of build you up and then kind of go uh into the more high intensity training once you actually have that baseline fitness so it's not something you just want to uh, start off right away with so the things the benefits of autophagy that we're going to see with exercise is actually a couple things you're going to see uh, increased insulin sensitivity or decreased insulin resistance uh, with it you're going to see muscle uh, building so muscle mass also goes up too and that also incorporates a little bit of autophagy uh, as the cells are trying to build especially the muscle cells they're going to have to recycle some of the pro proteins that are in the are within the cells to build back up a stronger muscle uh, to build and then obviously there are the more systemic uh, benefits from exercise as well too. We're talking about improved cardiovascular fitness. So we're looking at improving your cholesterol profile, your HDL levels going up, dropping your LDL levels, uh, better mental health with it as well too. So exercise also has a benefit as far as battling depression, anxiety, uh, and even with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, there's going to be some benefit uh, with exercise as well. So what are the things you need to look out for? Or how can you mess up exercise on autophagy? And I think I already touched on that a little bit before. Doing too much too soon, uh, over-exercising. So kind of getting the chronic exercisers, you need to kind of let your body recover with that as well too. Uh, so let's talk about some of the science behind exercise and autophagy. So there was a study published in 2012 in the journal Nature out of the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center that took mice and had a couple different types of mice, one that actually was genetically modified so it could not actually uh, get into autophagy with exercise and compared those to kind of the normal mice that were also exercising. And when they looked at kind of the muscle fibers and the heart fibers and liver, uh, of these mice after the study was done, I think it was over uh, eight to 12 weeks, running on a treadmill or a little uh, mouse wheel for 50 minutes a day. They found that that the normal mice actually had more signs that they're entering into autophagy with the exercise and the mice that could not induce autophagy actually had a lot of de degradation uh, of their cellular structure. So one of the benefits, at least on mice, that we saw with, with autophagy and exercise. And there's been further studies in humans going on that, that look at uh, exercise such as running, swimming, um, cycling, as far as the benefits of autophagy on humans as well, too. So, you know, there's enough studies out there that I think promote the benefit of autophagy from exercise that we need to also throw that in as a, another reason for promoting exercise. So it's not just the cardiovascular benefits. And part of the way that this... Uh, Exercise may be benefiting us with autophagy. It may actually be a little bit more. So it may be the way that's inhibiting mTOR pathways, um, the AMP kinase uh, pathways as well. So a lot of biochemistry that kind of goes in there as far as exercise either increasing uh, or enhancing or inhibiting, depending on which pathway we're talking about. 
So, so one of the other benefits that we may see with exercise as far as triggering autophagy may be an increase in our reactive oxygen uh, species, or ROS. And when that happens uh, with exercise, that's actually another signal to the cells that they need to induce autophagy. So again, moderate exercise kind of triggers those reactive oxygen species, kind of a uh, breakdown uh, process that happens uh, with that type of exercise. And again, another signal to the body saying, hey, we need to kind of clean things up and, and start recycling products uh, you know, within the cell because we may need them to build back up after we're done with the exercise. So one of the other ways that exercise may also induce autophagy may be hormonal as well too. So one of the things that we do see with um, with exercise is glucagon levels go out, get a little bit of a glucose release for the muscles, but that may and that adrenaline release as well too. And both of those, glucagon and adrenaline, are signals to the body or signals to the certain cells. They may also have to increase their autophagy because of the exercise that's happening. So it's probably so there may actually be a three or four prong approach to how exercise induces autophagy within the body. So it's you know not just limiting or inhibiting mTOR. It's also working on the AMP kinase uh, pathways hormonally mediated as well. And then those react, uh, reactive oxygen species are probably three or four different pathways that are, are bodies using exercise uh, to promote autophagy. And so that's, I think, again, looking at it from a, a bunch of different angles and looking at the benefits that exercise can give us for inducing the autophagy within the body and taking the benefits out of that. So you don't need just to kind of go through a fast for it, although there is some other benefits with fasting. I'll talk about that in other videos. So just to summarize, autophagy is a cellular process that happens within all of our cells, kind of the recycling of cellular structures that have kind of degraded where they're not that beneficial or not functioning properly within each cell that the cell can then break down to its you know components, basic components, where we're talking amino acids or fatty acids, and then use those for, for building up new proteins, organelles, or whatever you have uh, within those cellular structures. Exercise is one way to induce that autophagy, so there's a benefit to it but it has to be in moderation. And there's a couple different forms of exercise as we talked about, they can do it when we're talking about aerobic exercise, such as uh, running, swimming, biking, uh, high intensity exercise, and you know, kind of a high intensity uh, weightlifting can also help with uh, that exercise induced autophagy. So hopefully that was a little helpful as far as getting folks to understand that there's other ways to get into autophagy, not, not just fasting, although this is not a knock on fasting. I think there's a lot of benefits from fasting, whether we're doing intermittent fasting or prolonged fasting. I think, you know, people definitely see health benefits from that. But for some people, intermittent fasting or fasting may not be something that they can really incorporate into their lifestyle. So this is another way to look at the benefits of autophagy through exercise. And so hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you like this video, then kind of the, here's a summary, you know, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, you know, share this video with friends, love to help people out uh, with spreading out this knowledge. And then write down in the comments if you want to see something else from, uh, from me, other topics you want to cover, or if you need clarification, always, um, Always love to help out. Always love to answer questions. Hey, this is Dr. John with the Healthy MD, and glad to have you aboard.